Ever wonder how we have different languages in so many different countries? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about the Tower of Babel, as well as the story of Abraham, whose name was later changed to Abram. Stay tuned. episode of Get to Know God. We're going to talk a little bit about the Tower of Babel and the story of Abraham. So let's jump right in. Uh, but before we start, I just wanted to say that this, these episodes are not to um, convert anybody to Christianity, although that we hope that uh, you consider uh, becoming a Christian. It's just to help believers and non-believers grow closer either to God Almighty or learn some basic principles that a number of your friends, family, and neighbors who are believers, the stories that they talk about and how those stories relate to present day. So let's get started. The Tower of Babel. Did you ever hear the term, you know, stop babbling? You know, I would imagine that term came from uh, Babel. So at one time, all of the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylon and settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. This uh, making of the bricks, they were going to be able to say, it'll allow us to build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and will keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down, took a look at the city and the tower that the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world, and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, he scattered them again all over the world. So... I, I don't obviously know what the reason was, you know, deep down with the Lord. Uh, but I would imagine, like always, there was a reason long term. And there was a plan that the God had in place to confuse the language and to scatter the people. So let's talk about the story of Abraham. Abraham says, despite God's swift judgment of sin, most people ignored him and continued to sin. But a handful of people really, really tried to follow God. One of these individuals was Abraham. God appeared to Abraham one day and promised to make his descendants into a great nation. Turn the page. Part of the agreement was to obey God through sharp testing and an incident that almost destroyed his family, Abraham remained faithful to God. Throughout this section, we're going to talk about how he lived a life of faith. So, God promises a nation to Abraham. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, because his name eventually changed. Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, 
and go into the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who treat you with contempt. All of the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instruction, instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haram. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all of his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household, and he headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived at Canaan, Abraham traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up a camp beside the Oak of Moreh. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give you this land to your descendants. And Abraham built, or Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord, who appeared to him. After that, he traveled south and set up a camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and it looks like I to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward Negev. So what eventually happens is Abraham and Sarah, um, they are promised a child later. And Sarah kind of laughs because she is well advanced in age, and she didn't believe that the Lord could do that. And so eventually she has a baby, he is named, and you know, through traveling with Lot, Lot initially was not listening to God. And when they came across a place called Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord eventually destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, Lot, Lot's wife turns around and looks back when they were told by the angel not to, and she gets turned into a pillar of salt. So. There's a lot that happens with Abraham from him uh, being instructed to sacrifice his own son and the Lord wanted to see if he was going to be obedient, which he was, because um, Abraham knew that Lot would make, um, that uh, the God would make a way. And uh, his son was a little confused and he's like, you know, where is the sacrifice? And you know, and when Abram goes to do what the Lord has instructed him to do there eventually was a little lamb that gets caught in the thicket and that was the sacrifice that God had provided but God wanted to ensure that Abraham was completely obedient and so often guys we are not as obedient as we need to be as Christians we are not as obedient or as um, disciplined as we need to be if we are Christian or non-Christian. And there are so many stories in the Bible that relate to real world issues, real world problems, and there are real world lessons that one can learn from being obedient and one can learn from reading uh, your Bible and other books as well. So uh, I would encourage you to Look into the story of Abraham and Lot and the Tower of Babel. I um, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Until next time, we will talk a little bit more in detail about the son that Abraham and Sarah actually had and uh, how that all came about with their, uh, their handmaid, Hagar. It's a very, very interesting story, but we'll talk about that on the next episode.